how they consume and use music, at least on the B2B side. And to do that in as non-threatening, easy a way possible has been for us the great success. So whether it be with you know, technology companies like Sony, where it's a device that's really easy to use, or our software partners who uh, have built you know, iPhone apps or, or web versions of their systems so that it's you know, three-click access, it's actually easier in digital to click three times to get access to your music than it is to open up the physical CD package, have to open uh, the package, open up the jewel case, take the CD out, put the CD in your computer or in your uh, stereo system, press play. So we're really saving the recipient clicks, time, effort, but asking them to make that change, that leap of faith to digital, is has been challenging. And we're also dealing with the, the just the technological the technological piece of the sound quality. We want to make sure that if you're getting a digital file, that whatever you're listening to that digital file on still gives you the highest quality of music as possible. And that's a tough thing to control because I don't know if when I'm sending an album out to a journalist, if they're listening to that album on their little laptop speakers or if they're listening to it with their Beats headset or they're listening to it with their new House of Marley eco-friendly earbuds. Uh, we're not sure, so I have to make sure that the quality of the file I'm sending is as high as possible so that the experience that the recipient has is as good as possible as it would be in this world. That's very, very interesting. Um, now let's take a turn and let's talk about sustainable tours. Um, we know this is really um, near and dear to a lot of artists' heart. Um, Sheryl Crow, Dave Matthews, Willie Nelson was a big fan of creating sustainable tours. And Kevin, as our expert, um, can you walk us through your vision as to why you created some of the first um, sustainable tours and how you got it done? Well, I, I mean, I've been now, I don't mind dating myself. I've been in the business 30 years and uh, started out as a production stage manager in Los Angeles. And uh, I think I kind of grew up with a little bit of a hippie background and I thought hippies and punkers were the same people. <laughs> and uh, I kind of turned all, and so my dream <coughs> was to kind of turn all the punkers into hippies and uh, started learning about, you know, just doing things on my own because I followed the Grateful Dead and sold egg rolls in the parking lot and learned about some of this stuff. And, um, and then all of a sudden started just kind of looking at, you know, and to be honest, I had to collect aluminum cans one time to pay the rent. So, you know, I was doing this kind of thing. And then as I created the Warp Tour, which has become more of a lifestyle tour than a music festival, um, I think we started to look at things and I said, I think I'm an educator as much as just lucky enough to do my passion with music, be around it all the time. Um, and just slowly asking questions, and uh, we've gone full circle now because uh, my festival I'm, I'm work, uh, that I just announced today is with Willie Nelson, uh, another project I'm working on, so I'm really proud of that. Because six years ago I started learning about biofuels and things, and, and actually thought, got the idea of calling Bio Willie, and said, uh, I'd like to use some of your biodiesel on my tours, and uh, they asked me how many trucks I had, and I said 19 semi-trucks, and how many buses, and I said up to 40 and generators, and they laughed, they said, there's no way you can do this, uh, which never goes down well with me in my um, And I started sourcing and understanding biofuels and things like that, and uh, you know, got to a point where we now can have 5,000 gallons delivered and fuel on site. Um, it's been organizing our fans. Uh, we're lucky to, the Warp Tour is now entering its 17th year, and the average fan, because we all have research now, is 17.7 .7 years old, um, that, you know, these are the kids that can change, um, that are actually open-minded. Um, and we actually, it's fun to see that 20 to 30 kids come to the Warp Tour just to help sort the cycles of each day. Uh, you know, we start getting the bands, uh, just, you know, and I always say 90% of the people are just having a good time, but it's the 10% that are going to change the world and uh, walk out of a fun event, because I believe if you're having fun, and I haven't met anyone that goes to a music festival because they aren't there to have fun, um, except the old sound guys. They, they get hey. <laughs> 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 uh, but, you know, I, so, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, it was just this thing, and we started integrating fun into the work tour, and the tours I do. Uh, we, we started delivering, you know, we just started delivering blue trash cans to each bus at the beginning of the tour. And you can shame the bands that don't put it outside their bus in the morning. Um, the other bands, um, then, you know, I always believe in rewards. So creating this eco program that the best sponsors they work with, uh, the best band each summer, the best fans that do it, qualify to go on these eco trips we take them on. And we, we've done them, and we always try to build it around fun and education. So we take them
down to Key West, we learn, again, learn about the keys and how everything siphons to the keys. 